In this video, we will apply our knowledge of factoring to solve equations. So far in this unit, we've learned a variety of factoring methods, such as decomposition for trinomials, for both messy and monic trinomials, which we could use to factor a function like 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. We've also learned factoring by grouping, which we could use to factor a function like x cubed minus 8x squared plus 2x minus 16. Then we learned how to factor a difference of squares, like 4x squared minus 49. And finally, most recently, we learned to apply the factor theorem to factor higher degree polynomials like x cubed minus 5x squared minus 8x plus 12. In this subsection, we will use all of these factoring methods to solve polynomial equations. So here's a three-step process you can use to solve by factoring. Step one is to set one side of the equal sign to zero. Step two is to factor. And then step three is to find the values of x that set each factor to zero. Let's apply this to a few examples and touch on some key points. Here's our first example. Solve 4x cubed minus 49x equals 0. Step 1 is to set one side of the equal sign to 0, which is already done for us. Step 2 is to factor. Here, be sure to employ the golden rule of factoring. Pull out common factors as soon as possible. In this case, we can pull out a common factor of x from both terms, like so. Make sure to remember to write the common factor we pulled out next to the brackets. Now we have ourselves the same difference of squares we used as an example above. Remember, to factor a difference of squares, we take the square roots of the first term and the second term, which are 2x and 7 respectively. Then we rewrite the difference of squares as the product of the sum of the square roots and the difference of the square roots, like so. The left-hand side of the equal sign is now fully factored, so we can move on to step 3, which is to find the values of x that set each factor to 0. We can do so by writing each factor on its own equal to 0, and then isolating x in each case. Let's start with the factor of x. x is already isolated, so x equals 0 is one solution to our equation. Next, we'll look at the factor of 2x plus 7. Subtracting 7 from both sides gives us 2x equals negative 7, then dividing both sides by 2 gives us x equals negative 7 over 2. Finally, we'll look at the factor of 2x minus 7. Adding 7 to both sides gives us 2x equals 7, then dividing both sides by 2 gives us x equals 7 over 2. These three values of x are all the solutions to this equation. Okay, moving forward to the next example, solve x cubed minus 8x squared plus 2x minus 11 equals 5. Step 1 is to set one side of the equal sign to 0, so we subtract 5 from both sides to give us this equation, which matches the example for factoring by grouping from above. So in step 2, let's try to factor by grouping. From the pair of terms on the left, we can pull out x squared, like so. From the pair of terms on the right, we can pull out a 2, like so. Don't forget, the whole expression is still equal to 0. Now, since the two brackets are the same, we can write this expression as the product of the blue coefficients and the x minus 8, like so. Now that the expression is factored, we can move on to step 3 and find the values of x that set each factor to 0. Let's write each factor equal to 0 on its own and then examine them individually to isolate x. Looking at the factor of x squared plus 2, to isolate x we have to subtract 2 from both sides. This gives us x squared equals negative 2. Then, taking the square root of both sides gives us x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 2. Don't forget the plus or minus since we took the square root. Do you notice any issue here? This can't be a solution since we can't take the square root of a negative. Okay, so onto the factor of x minus 8, we need to add 8 to both sides to give us x equals 8. This is the only real solution to our equation. Okay, on to our last example, solve x cubed minus 5x squared minus 8x equals negative 12. Step 1 is to set one side of the equal sign to 0, so we have to add 12 to both sides to give us this equation. Notice that this expression matches the example above for factoring by using the factor theorem. Hopefully, you're familiar with how to do so. In step 2, which is to factor, we'll start by testing values of x to find a root and a corresponding factor. To start, let's test x equals 1. Substituting 1 in for all the x's gives us 1 cubed minus 5 times 1 squared minus 8 times 1 plus 12, which does evaluate to 0. 
This means that x equals 1 is a root, and x minus 1 is a factor. Now we have to divide x cubed minus 5x squared minus 8x plus 12 by the factor we found, x minus 1. I'll let you try this on your own, and then show a solution using synthetic division. So here's the solution using synthetic division. Interpreting the result, we have a quotient of x squared minus 4x minus 12. We can rewrite the original cubic as the product of this quotient and the factor x minus 1 we divided by to get it. Okay, let's bring this product up and get rid of the work from the division to make some more space. Can we further factor this expression? Yes, we can factor the trinomial down to x plus 2 times x minus 6, like so. Now the expression is fully factored and we can move on to step 3, where we set each factor to 0 and isolate x. Starting with the factor of x plus 2, we subtract 2 from both sides to give us x equals negative 2. Moving on to x minus 6, we add 6 to both sides to get x equals 6. Finally, for the factor of x minus 1, we add 1 to both sides to give us x equals 1. These three values of x are the solutions to this equation. Hopefully, this video has given you a solid base to build off of as you try to solve polynomials by factoring. Make sure to remember these three steps and you'll be good to go.